Does it glow? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not into whether it glows or not. Well, good afternoon, good folk. Welcome back to the old Curiosity Shop. I'm Scott. Now, I'm not where I usually am. Today, I am deep in the heart of South Jersey. Well, not too deep, but deep enough. Hey, I'm in a place called Glassboro. Yeah. And um, Glassboro, New Jersey. Yes, they blew glass here years ago. It's a wonderful place, very bucolic. And there's a wonderful university here called Rowan University, which used to be called Glassboro State College. But I'm here today, and as you can see behind me, I'm at a thrift shop. I came down to uh, Pittman, New Jersey, to have lunch with a friend of mine on Broadway in lovely downtown Pittman, which has a delightful historic theater from the 1920s with a nice old pipe organ in there. And they do uh, uh, professional shows. And so if you're ever in the South Jersey area, check out the Pittman Theater in Pittman, New Jersey. Anyway, we had a nice lunch and then I'm going to do some thrifting. So here I am. You ever heard of Richards and Hartley? Well, it was one of those American glass companies making glass in the Pittsburgh area. Oh... Civil War era until sometime in the late 1890s when I think they were one of those glass companies that got sucked up by that big United States glass amalgamation conglomeration where 30 some companies all got sucked under one, um, one umbrella. And then I don't know what happened to them, how long they lasted. Anyway, I'm telling you that because in a thrift shop, not that one, but another one that I stopped at, I found four of these, what I believe to be Richards and Hartley. And I think the pattern is called Venus and Cupid. Um, this might be flint glass. Uh, there's a brilliancy to it. It doesn't have the weight of lead, but boy, it's got the clarity of real crystal and take a look right there but can you maybe see Venus and Cupid <laughs> they're on this side as well so we have a shield and a stylus and a band around here and some little gnarling around the these little tiny little footed sherbets anyway I found four of these wow um, so if it's what I just said, I think it is, they would go back to, you know, whenever the company made this pattern, um, prior to 1900. Wow, no chips, no cracks on them. And they were, you know, like five bucks for, for maybe four of them. For this antique glass, I flipped out. <laughs> Boy, when we hold that up and it sparkles, you go... Ooh, we don't even have to feel it. That looks like brilliant cut. And it is. This is definitely not pressed. And we've got a very overcast and cloudy day here in southern New Jersey. So a relish, a pickle, a celery, um, whatever you want to put in it. And beautiful cut, um, uh, cut glass. It's heavy. It's got lead in it. And you can see all of the facets and uh, I love the way it sort of curls. It gently cups around the edges. And you know, you run your finger along the sawtooth, you're going to find sharpness there, as I always say, Be even, with, even if you can't tell if it's chipped or not. And it's almost, unless a big tooth is gone, it really is hard to tell whether these are chipped. This one, I did a tooth check, and we've only got one tooth back here that has sort of a whack out of it the other teeth there may be some flea bites but you know collectors of this EAP collectors of this brilliant cut they are gonna have to forgive some of the little chips it's almost inevitable you ought to see it sparkle on the dashboard and then I got these are the rest of those what did I pay two dollars and 99 cents 
is what I paid for the four of the Cupid and Venus. At least that's, as I said, what I think they are. Then I never find mixing bowls in Anchor Hawking Philby. Never. Well, I found a little one, but here's the big nesting bowl and it says Fire King right on the bottom of it. You can't see it because of the price tag. Now I did pay six bucks for it. Um, and you know what I might do is hold on to this rolled edge mixing bowl. And then sooner or later, uh, all of the uh, orphans will come back to nest. <laughs> we'll have a whole set. Or maybe we'll just sell it. I don't know. Okay, now, you're going to have to wait until I get back to the uh, 1925 bungalow to explain why... I, unless you saw the live yesterday. If you saw the live yesterday, then you already know. Um, I had to go back and get two more of these restaurant wear uh, plates. But hey, don't worry if you missed the live yesterday. You don't have to go and watch it to figure this out. Because as soon as I get out of here, we're going to have part two to this video today. You know, like right here connected to this one. You know what I'm trying to say. Any, any, just stay tuned. Look at that. That's old milk glass this almost qualifies as clam broth yeah what's the difference between clam broth and milk glass well there's a little bit of opinion involved but i like to think of clam broth which can be white green pink it's kind of a watered down imagine you know like skim milk clam broth what collectors call clam broth with glass um, has a skim, mil almost a skim milk look to it. And it may not show up out here um, in this light, but there's a little bit of transparent, a little bit of translucent. You get a little bit of light through it. Um, I paid five bucks for that pipe. It's a souvenir of Philadelphia and it's great. How old is it? It's as old as 1920. Might even be a little bit older than that. It's got its original paint on it. As you see, that man was talking on the radio, so I turned him off. And it's just a souvenir, right? What do we do today? We buy baseball caps and t-shirts. Well, back in Granny's day, um, or refrigerator magnets. Uh, but your great-grandparents would buy an item like this, uh, um, a glass item, as a just as a souvenir of their trip. What am I going to do with it? I'll probably just stick it in my little... Uh, bookcase, oak bookcase in the back room where I have various glass items that um, are mine to keep. So, souvenir of Philadelphia. That was fun to get my hands on and that doesn't have any chips or cracks on it either. Okay, then also as soon as I get home today I'm going to show you some pink glass made by Falstoria. Today in this thrift shop I purchased four Cambridge luncheon plates, Decagon, and you'll see why when I finish this video. Now these are little, oh, eight and a half inch lunch plates or eight inch lunch plates. And many times Cambridge is marked. Can you see it? There is a triangle with a C in the middle of it. I don't know if it shows up. Um, and there's a specific reason why I bought the four of these. Mm -hmm. Oh, and look, there's a little Windsor chair. It's actually a little Windsor chair for a child. And it's old. So that's sitting back there too. Next up, I would very much like to show you, once I move a few things around here, I need you to remember to put all this glass away before I take off. Um, sorry. <laughs> I purchased eight of the most beautiful coasters I've ever seen. These bad boys are nice. Eight of them. Wow. 
They must have been deluxe. Look at almost the over-engineering of these. A generous coaster, very deep there. That is a good half inch deep. That'll really hold your glass. Um, they're almost footed here on the bottom. There's an embossed star pattern on the bottom. And that's real gilding all around the outside. Take a look at that. These are wonderful. Who made them? I don't know. This was a good quality glass company. And boy, oh boy, I'll tell you what. They're probably, again, going to go back to the uh, before the first, before the second world war. They were probably, let's just say they were probably made sometime within the first 50 years of the last century. You know, the century I was born in. And they're absolutely, they're just wonderful. They're heavy. Uh, boy, that is a coaster. And I have eight of them. So we'll see. Um, Will I sell four and four? Or will I sell all eight? Oh, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. Okay, what I'm going to do now is <laughs> rearrange everything and head back to uh, the town in which I live. And then we'll have another thrift haul right now. Don't turn me off. We're going to go to the dining room table and we'll be there in just a second. Wham! Okay, I lied. I had to make one more stop. You know, you have to stop at every thrift shop on your way home. And if I had not stopped, I wouldn't have run into this big Bavarian. Whoo! Big Bavarian what? Oh dear. <laughs> big Bavarian. Do you call it a charger when it's this big? I don't know. It's a big, pretty plate. Now, it's decorative, sure. Um, Transferware, but the colors are pretty. I love this yellowish, limey green color around the outside. And who doesn't like fruit, yeah? Okay, it's good porcelain, very white on the back. I didn't say berry white, I said very white. And, yeah, so, I don't know. Nine at 12, 12, 13 inches across. Nine, 10, 11, 12, at least 12 inches across on this big Bavarian. Now, don't laugh or wag your fingers. No, I'm not going to start dealing in Tupperware on a regular basis, and there's nothing wrong with it. But you know, I love dipping into the mid century, and it just seems like people love these little plastic whatever tupperware is i guess tupperware is plastic um and these were cheap you know dollar 99 i know the lids are missing but um a lot of folks grew up with these and they still like them so we'll throw them out there for sale along the way some way and then probably the piece the loveliest piece which i might keep because I am actually, oh, I wanted to take this price tag off, not to not show you what I paid, but to not have the big old price tag right in the middle of it, and I can't get it off, so too bad. Um, I'm actually putting together a, a small, well, anyway, there it is. So it's, I like the shape of it. It's not an oval, it's not a circular shape. So it's a little unusual, because we use these are usually in a circle. It doesn't have a center handle, so that's different. And I cannot remember whose handles those are, but they're either Falstoria or Cambridge or somebody like that. Yeah. So it's a green depression etched um, serving tray. Engraved, rather. Wheel cut on the back. Um, does it glow? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not into whether it glows or not. But it probably does because I'm out here in the... So in, in some little bit of sunlight and you can see a little bit of glow on it we're getting ready of course to have coastal flooding which means the berlin circle not the berlin circle the um brooklawn circle is going to flood again so i need not head in that direction we're getting ready to have some bad uh storms i think it's coming up from the south you southerners sending it up to us and it looks like it's going to be, we're in for a lot of wind and rain. 
Um, why was I telling you that? I don't know. I don't know why I was telling you that, but that's probably going to be a keeper for me. So I'll go ahead and tell you. I am putting together a mixed, matched, mixed up, um, pink and green. Yeah. Don't care what company made it. Don't care whether it glows or not, but I'm going to do a nice little four place setting and I'm going to combine pink and green. So I will have my own watermelon table scape to show you eventually once I get all the pieces together like the way that I want to have them. Then I got to figure out what kind of tablecloth. What kind of tablecloth would look good under pink and green depression glass? You tell me. Black? Not white. Stark white is just too... Ugh. What would be pretty underneath pink and green? Well, as I said, you tell me. Um, so I'm going to keep that. Now, I am really excited because tomorrow I'm headed to an estate sale and I hope I don't spend too much. I'm going to have to put a limit on myself. What else was I about to tell you? Oh, I know. Okay, so right now let's go to the dining room table. Well, here I am back at the dining room table and honey, you got a big storm coming. In fact, it's already raining out there and getting quite blustery. That's just the beginning of it. We're in for woo over the next 24 hours. Well, I don't have all the sunlight I wanted, but I guess what I'll do is bring the items up to you and at least let you see how they sparkle in the ring light. This won't take too long. Let's start with the restaurant where you saw the two plates out in the car. The reason why I got them is because I needed them. I didn't actually buy as many as I had intended to, so I had to go back. All right, let's just take a quick look at the, at the pattern. Pattern. Very mid-century restaurant wear, and that light is too bright. Let me turn it down. Hold on. That's much better. Okay, so now you can actually see the colors of gray. I don't know if you call that russet or not. But you know, when I was a kid, I remember playing in somebody's basement that had those old, like, I don't know, I guess linoleum tiles, whatever. And it was these two colors, this uh, reddish, dark reddish color and gray color. This, by the way, is uh, Syracuse China, uh, made for a heavy restaurant where for diner use. Now, I've got a ton of it down here. In fact, hold on, let me get you, there you are, there we are, there we are. Um, I think I have maybe 16 place settings, something like that. What you'll get when I sell them is you'll get a cup and a saucer, you'll get a wonderful little, uh, what you call, um, well, those little vegetable bowls that are perfect for a side order of Brussels sprouts or pickled beets. And you'll get a dinner plate and a little luncheon plate. I haven't decided, probably some of these will be in a live sale and some of these will be on, uh, available in the eBay store to give everybody a chance. Really nice mid-century colors. Excellent condition. These haven't been destroyed in uh, a dishwasher. Now I think yeah, when I did this in the live yesterday, I think I said anchor hawking, but now my mind is, if I'm remembering correct, it's Jeanette, but either way, it doesn't matter. Someone wrote and corrected me, but I really, many times I need to be corrected, but in this case, I really didn't need to be corrected because I know that's a liar technically and not a harp. But the reason why I said harp is because the company that made this glass referred to it as harp. So, yep, it's a liar. So I do, I'm just kidding about the correcting me. I do thank the person who um, wanted to make sure that I knew that was a liar and not a harp. You know, I was a music major. So yeah, that's a liar, but uh, the company called it harp. And uh, is it uh, Jeanette? I think I said Hawking, but didn't Jeanette make it? I don't remember, one of the two. I only bought this one to add to my individual cup and saucer collection. Because as you may or may not know, I collect one example of all of the Depression era cups and saucers that I can possibly find. Then, uh, also in pink, I like to collect the Waterford pattern by Anchor Hawking. 
There it is, serving bowl, vegetable serving bowl. And also by hocking back here is the uh, uh, bloopity doopity doop, Miss America, <laughs> Miss America. And that's also in pink, which is fun, fun to find. I usually find Miss America in crystal, but it's great to find it in pink. And it's a three-footed cake stand. Not to be confused with English hobnail, which looks just like it, but you can, you can tell them apart. Then there's the amber mixing bowl. We've all seen that in a million and a half times. That'll come back again in October or September. Yep. This is also made by Anchor Hawking, and it's that pink, either shell or swirl, and it's Fire King. You know, um, I never can find this. It's interesting because there's certain things that, you know, I trip over them in my area. Ugh, the iris and herringbone bowl. Do you have this in your part of the country? Just curious. I never find this. This might be the first piece I've ever bought, and I like it. You know, I'll sell it. Very 50s. Woo! Big half gallon, right? Atlas. Canning jar. Always find the little ones. You know, quartz pints. It's the first half gallon one I've ever gotten my hands on. Love it. Now, over here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight. Beautiful. Under the ring light, they're going to look maybe peachy pink to you. Here, in my home, they're pink. So uh, these were made by the Faustoria Glass Company, and the pattern is called Fairfax. They're paneled. There are 12 panels in the saucers. And this pattern came out um, mid to late 20s, 26, 27, 28, something like that. And you'll find it in amber and green. And I don't know what other colors. Well, pink, obviously. Oh, topaz, the yellow color that uh, Faustoria called topaz. Um, and the cups came in two, I believe, two different styles, footed and non-footed. This particular cup is footed. Now, with the eight of these, I'm going to sell four, and I'm going to keep four. I want four of them for myself because I am putting together my own watermelon table setting. You know what I mean. Hold on. Hold the fork. You know I just bought that today. Wait, hold on, hold on. Think of a topic that you can discuss amongst yourselves. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to be mixing and matching, yeah? And I know this has an etch and the cups don't. Doesn't bother me at all. But I'll be doing place settings, and I just put that there so you can see it. I know it doesn't belong there. And then I've also got my, uh, some of the watermelon glass I have purchased before, because it's pink and green. So I'm gonna mix and match pink and green, and maybe by next Easter, by next springtime, I'll have uh, enough to do a really nice table setting. All I want is a place setting for four. I rarely, especially in this little house, entertain any more than four people. Um, you can pull out the leaves and sit six here, but eh, if I get six people, they can eat off Tupperware. So I really just want place settings for four. That's the reason why I'm gonna keep four of these. Mm -hmm. Are you still thinking about what color tablecloth you want me to use when I do my watermelon uh, table setting? See, that's pink and green. Okay. And then, I haven't looked this bad boy up yet, but it's a wonderful footed pedestal. And I'm gonna call it buttons and fans. I just think that, because you know why? I see buttons and I see fans. But again, as I said in the live yesterday, I don't know that that's the name of the pattern. It's probably not. Look at all of the wear around that rim. Um, where it's been sliding across Granny's table for a hundred years. Can you see that in here? That's it. Okay, EAPG. This is pressed glass, not leaded. That's a hundred years old, that piece. 
Okay, we've done everything over here. Let me now, pardon me, slide over here. Uh, there's a, uh, you know, to emboss, to, em Ooh! <laughs> to emboss papers. And we looked at it in yesterday's live and it said 1956 Cambridge Street, somewhere in Massachusetts. Um, so we'll sell that. This is made in Czechoslovakia. It's a beautiful, beautiful blue uh, milk pitcher or creamer for the breakfast table. And you see the Czechoslovakian mark on the bottom. Bright, we see a lot of these bright, bold, boy, they were not, the Czechoslovakians were not afraid of color. Even back in the uh, Depression era, 20s and 30s. And that's what that would date to. Here is another wonderful 100-year-old salver. Yeah, cake stand, whatever you'd like to call it, with a rim. And that's nine inches across. See there? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I like it. Very handsome. There's no etching on it, no fancy-pantsy, no buttons and bows and dippity-doos. Just beautiful, pressed American glass. That's going to date to 1900, 1910, 1915, maybe up to 1920, something like that. I've had this thing before. It is heavy. That thing must weigh 10 pounds. Can't remember who made it, but it's great. EAPG, Early American Pressed or Patterned Glass. Yeah. Okay. Ready for your springtime flowers. <clears throat> it's a heavy one. And it's a pretty one. And it has no damage on it. And lastly, a pair of Bohemian Victorian era uh, mantle lusters. These are going to go in the eBay store. Why don't I take the camera and zoom in on these? Because I don't think you can really see them from where you are. Hold on, we'll be right back. Yeah, we'll be right back. Wait a minute. Okay, there they are. What a find! What a find! And I know it looks a little confusing with all the other pieces behind. These mantle lusters in the Victorian era would have been on a mantle, just like that one there. Now, of course, you see I have electric, uh, 1920s era electric candles on my mantle. So these aren't exactly my style, but they are stunningly beautiful. The cobalt blue and the gold. I will part the, the uh, prisms j slightly so you can see the actual glass candle stick. They are called mantle lusters, and you can see why. This is exquisite crystal prisms. You've got some gothic cut and some triangular cut. Um, these are the nice big... Uh, with the jewels on the top. Uh, oh, it may be eight, eight inches in length. These are stunning. Now there's some old wax inside of here. Uh, not a big deal, but this is all glass. These are unsigned, they usually are. They came in pairs and each one of the prisms are hung here on these little, you probably already knew that, these little brass hooks. Right, and see, they're the old ones now. They're not new. See how they've darkened with age? I took all of the prisms off, washed them in the kitchen sink, got as many fingerprints off as I could, and then uh, hung them back on again so that you could see. Each one of the lusters here, mantle lusters, features 12 prisms, or sometimes people call those crystals. And um, as I said, this one here is what would be referred to as a gothic cut. Look at how it just takes the light and lets it dance across the room. Can you imagine a dark Victorian room only lit by gaslight or candlelight? These would shimmer and sparkle. And that was their purpose. Bling, bling. Yeah. You know, Mary Lincoln had a few sets of these. The sticks are chip and crack free. You are almost always going to find a little flea bite here or there on the glass prisms. It almost is cannot be avoided. 
And with these, they are in remarkably wonderful condition. I counted maybe three or four or five little flea bites here and there. You don't see them. You don't feel them. It's not a detraction. But just letting you know when you get a huddle, especially down here on these points, you'll find. Now see, that point is excellent. That point just at the very nip of it, just right, just right on the very end has chipped off. But let's back up again and let you see them. They're going to go in the eBay store and um, I would anticipate that they'll sell for somewhere between 300 to 400. They're um, beautiful and they're not listed yet. I haven't photographed them yet. So I'll let you know when they get into the eBay store if you're interested in the uh, beautiful mental lusters. Okay, now I'm going to stand back up and I'm going to try to back up without breaking anything or stepping on something. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Now let me put this back up here. That's going to be it for the thrift haul today. I want to thank everybody for joining me. It was great to have you come along, and I guess it's time for me to do another shop along. Um, yeah, I'm about due for another shop along. But until then, I will say to you, thanks for watching. Now, wait for the cat. And so long for now. Here come the rain, here come the rain again. Don't you fall on my mantle lusters.